Gav Garnerously. Send in notions in the firm of Minior Chicks to the following address. <laughs> Spoking Potty and Fiend. Uh, trot, Linden, Worst Wind. You just repute that. Lot. <laughs> in Sigmund Freud's I record. God niggard. <laughs> Is the tea ready yet? Oh, yes, it should be. I'll give it another ten seconds to brew so we wouldn't lose any of the flavour. No, we don't want to lose any flavour, do we, Dad? No, I certainly don't. Um, I'm using the larger capacity tea bags, actually. Oh, the bigger bags, as advertised? Yes, oh, yes. Well, um, the thing is, they are a little more expensive to start with, you know. Sorry, I forgot to put the water in. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't been brewing at all. Oh. I'll give it a good shake around. Yeah, anyway. that'll do. Yeah. No, I'm using the, um, oh, I nearly put the whistle in the pot <laughs> and the pot top on the kettle. Uh, we'll which wouldn't do at all. Because we want the cup of tea done. Yeah, sorry, Kate. Um, no, I was saying that I'm using the uh, larger capacity tea bags now. Yeah. Because they're a little more expensive, but it's worth it in the end because, um, uh, when you've collected a hundred labels, you send them into the firm and they send you back a plastic replica of a World Cup football player. <laughs> and when you've got the whole team, you send that into the firm and they send you back a free tea bag. A free tea bag? Yeah, a gratis complimentary tea bag. What a wonderful gesture in this materialistic age. Well, it's a ray of hope, isn't it, Pete? Yeah, it certainly is. It sounds like a boon to the housewife. Oh, it is, Pete. Yeah, well, while you're doing all your ironing and uh, brewing the tea about like that, I was reading this rather interesting article on women's liberation by Miss Jermaine Greer. Yeah. Did you peruse the item aforesaid? I did, as a matter of fact, yeah. I got about halfway through, then I had to nip off and check on my rice pudding. Oh, your rice puddings are coming on a treat, actually. Oh, thank you very much. It's uh, quite interesting about the subjugation of women throughout the ages, you mm. know, how they've been dominated by the male. Yeah. Uh, you'd be mum, would you? Oh, yes, certainly. Thank you. Uh, not too much milk. No. I got it quite strong. Is that all right? Yes, thank you. And I think Miss Greer, who is not an unintelligent woman, no, has agree. raised a number of interesting and salient points. She raised two on the cover that caught my attention. <laughs> I follow you, Dad. There was nothing written on the cover. Uh, no, Pete. The, uh, the points I was referring to were not were of a visual nature. <laughs> <laughs> Scarcely concealed by her peekaboo blouse. <laughs> <laughs> that is merely being smutty, Dad. Sorry. You are doing precisely what Miss Greer and her cohort object to. Namely, treating women purely as sexual objects. Well, I wouldn't mind it the other way round. I trust your last remark is in no way connected with your present position. Not at all. Not in the slightest. I merely meant that I, I wouldn't mind being used as a sexual object by women, ha having them satiate their lusts upon my body. <laughs> Surely you'd rather be respected for your mind rather than your body? No. <laughs> well, eventually, yes. But I'd like them to give my body a good going over first. Yeah. Are those scones ready yet? Yeah, they should be, yeah. I was thinking, you know, however, whatever Miss um, Greer said, that the lot of women has uh, improved since Victorian times. Oh, yes, undoubtedly. Yeah. I mean, in Victorian days, a woman's life was pure drudgery. Yeah, exactly. Mind you, there are still countries in the world today, thank you, Dad, no, there are right. still countries in the world today where the, the woman is still completely dominated by the man. Yeah, I'd like to go there. Mm. Yeah, I wouldn't mind hopping across for a look, you know, purely as an observer of ethnic uh, phenomena and things like that. Oh, yes, I wouldn't like to take advantage no, of the situation. No, of course not. Right. Take the Far East, for example. Yeah. There the woman is treated as a mere beast of burden. Yeah. She has to walk ten yards behind her husband. Yeah. The only time she's allowed to walk in front of her husband is in suspected minefields. <laughs> That's fair enough, though, isn't it? I suppose so, yeah. yeah. Would you mind freshening up the pot a bit? This is a bit weak. Oh, I'll try. In spite of the bigger bags, as advertised. Yeah, it's a little <laughs> bit of a disappointing brew, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Now, anyway, continuing on this unusually fascinating tack, Pete, 
Uh, I think God, with his usual perspicacity, yeah. uh, has made man the aggressor in the eternal war for sexes, you know. I mean, uh, since primordial time, uh, man has been the hunter. Where'd I put those bloody tea bags? There is a second drawer, along with your hand cream. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you see, I think, quite honestly, that Miss Greer has overstated her case. Yeah. You know? I mean, there are certain advantages that women enjoy that we could never share in. You know? I mean, try as we might, Pete, we could never have a baby. Well, try as we certainly won't, Dad. <laughs> I mean, not for us, the exquisite pleasure of a baby at our breast. Milk and two lumps, as usual. <laughs> yes, I agree, Dad, that man, being unable to perform this act of ultimate creativity, uh, namely, the making of a tiny baby, uh, channels his mind through the realms of art and science. Uh, and whatever Miss Greer may say about equality, there's never been the female equivalent, say, of uh, Beethoven. Pianist extraordinaire. Pianist extraordinaire, or Dr. Newton, for example, famed discoverer of gravity. Yeah. I mean, Dad, was it mere coincidence that the apple just happened to fall on Dr. Newton's head? Yeah. And he immediately said, aha, gravity. Yeah. Now, research has shown that apples in that region have been falling on the heads of women for centuries. Yeah. And all they managed to come up with are things like, um, Blimey, there's another apple on my head. If, uh, <laughs> naive remarks of that kind. Yeah. It took a man in the shape of Dr. Newton to say immediately, Aha! Gravity! Gravity. Yeah. yeah, a man. A man, homo sapiendi. Yeah. yeah. Um, ends. Pardon? Ends. Ends what? Sapiendi. Sapiendi is a plural. There oh, was only one Dr. Newton. Oh, there certainly was. Yes, a unique personality in the scientific world. Uh, now, if I can uh, add to this uh, amazing argument, Pete, it wasn't Mrs. Archimedes who jumped out the bath shouting Eureka. No, Mrs. Archimedes jumped into the bath saying, where's my husband? <laughs> a charming feminine gesture, but scientifically valueless. Scientific value, Dad, nil. Yeah. And in the field of sport, for example, yeah. you won't find a woman running a four-minute mile, will you? Well, I don't know. Stella Newby was pretty close to that when I asked her for a kiss behind the wooden building. <laughs> this is not much of a tribute to you as the sexual aggressor. Oh. Hardly the stud, Dad. <laughs> uh, wasn't a case of that at all. She suddenly remembered that she'd left her oven on. Uh, proving conclusively, I think, Pete, that a woman's place is in the home. Well, you may think that, and I may think that, but in America, the whole women's liberation thing has been taken to absurd extremes. Uh, ladies are actually going out into the streets and burning their brassieres. I bet that hurts. <laughs> they take them off first, Dad. Oh. They're not complete bloody idiots. Oh. No, they regard the brassiere as a symbol of masculine enslavement. Right, silly, isn't it? Oh, I think so. I mean... I ask you, did we men force ladies into their brassieres? No. <laughs> I ask you seriously, Pete, did we males force the females into their brassieres? No. I've been trying for years to get them out of them. <laughs>